Oh my God, it smells good. So it's absorbing all the tomatoes, onion and garlic. Yes. And we know now it's time to put the stock in. Okay, so we're adding in the stock, more. Yes. So that's... No, no move, more. Just a stop. No, no, no. Oh, no, we don't move it. Oh, I see. So we can't stir it at this stage. We're just adding a little bit of stock. So we put the stock in. How long does the stock cook in with the noodles? With the noodles, 10 minutes. About 10 minutes. About Easy. 10 minutes. Okay, perfect. Right. Stalk and everything. Finally, some coriander. All right. Not to put in on the plate. Okay, let's go. So the famous sopa de fileo seco. It smells so delicious. I can't believe that such simple ingredients can smell so good. Yes. You can put... Uh, first of all, the cheese. The cheese, a little sprinkle, like so. And avocado. Perfect. And coriander. So that, Carmen, is your famous sopa de fileo okay. seco. Mm. 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 I cannot believe that with a bit of tomato and onion and garlic, you get something. The flavor is so amazing. Remember, fresh tomato, fresh onion, and fresh garlic. Thank you so much for showing me. And now I'm going to show you my version. Fidel Seco is this wonderful noodle dish from Mexico. And I think if I had to choose from all of the dishes I've cooked and eaten out there, this could be one of my all time favourites. And the great thing is, is it's just as good as a simple supper dish as it is here. I'm jizzing it up with a bit of fresh crab to make a really swanky dinner party starter. I've got some vermicelli, which is just some really thin noodles, and I'm toasting them in this oil. So I've got some hot olive oil, and I want to fry the vermicelli until they go lovely and golden like they are here. And that really brings out the nuttiness of the pasta, and it makes the dish taste absolutely wonderful. Be careful not to burn them, because when you burn them, they go a bit bitter. That is lovely golden brown. That's just what I'm looking for. So I'm going to drain it on some kitchen paper to get rid of the excess oil. This can be done well ahead, and now I'm going to concentrate on my sauce. What I've got here is some onions and a bit of green chilli sweated down. I've just turned the onion translucent so it can bring out all those natural sugars without really taking on much colour. To the onions, I'm going to add allspice, one of my favourite spices they use in Mexico. Good pinch. A tin of tomatoes, dead easy. Some capers. Now, the lovely thing about capers in Mexico is there's a great history to them. This recipe is from Veracruz, which was on the eastern side of Mexico, which is where Cortez first landed when he conquered the Americas. And when he came to Mexico, he brought all the wonderful Mediterranean flavours with him, including things like olives and capers. So lots of the recipes you get in that region of Mexico are really rich in Mediterranean flavours. Bay leaves, they love to use fresh herbs just to ramp up the taste. In it goes and a pinch of brown sugar to bring out the sweetness of the tomatoes. And that final piece of smoke, a bit of chipotle. It's got a wonderful, fiery, smoky taste. It's going to add a real punch to this sauce. Good teaspoon in there. And that's it. I'm going to just simmer this sauce down for a little while, add some chicken stock, and then we're ready to cook the noodles. It's as easy as that. and they're going to slowly absorb all the flavour and they're going to go soft and silky and they'll be ready in about five or ten minutes. Literally is as easy as that. These are looking perfect. They're completely soft, rich and delicious. So I'll just take a spoonful of these wonderful noodles. I just need to dress them with a bit of sour cream or creme fraiche, if you prefer. Oh, look at that. Lots of lovely crab meat. A touch of pimenton, smoked paprika. A little squeeze of lime. 
and some freshly chopped coriander. And that is all there is to it. This is a really stunning dinner party dish. I've just got to try it. Mm. Smoky, fiery, sweet, comforting. I just love it. I'm back in Oaxaca to try another type of street food that goes down particularly well in this city. We tend to think of jellies as something you serve at children's parties. But in Mexico, they're tasty treats that you can find on any street corner. Jellies. Now, Oaxaca makes incredible jellies, and I'm going to get one of these. ¿Cuántos son? Diez pesos. Diez pesos. Jelly tastic. Qué increíble. ¿Qué sabores? Ese es de vainilla. De vanilla. Vanilla flavored jelly. Now that is a good jelly. Here's how I make mine. I love jelly and I love the way it slides down your throat. And here I'm doing a layered jelly like they get in Mexico in Oaxaca. And I came up with this while I was in Oaxaca using passion fruit, which grow everywhere and they have such a vibrant citrusy taste. I absolutely love them. So I'm just scooping out the seeds here and putting them through a sieve because we want all the juice, but we don't want the seeds actually in the jelly, just all that fresh citrusy flavor. Of course, you could use a passion fruit juice, but it's much better when they're fresh because you really get that zing. If you're using fresh, you'll need around six. In the bowl, I've already got 200 mils of freshly squeezed orange juice. And once I've got the rest of this juice out, I'm just going to add the juice of a lemon, which really brightens up all the flavors. And I think what's really great about this recipe in particular is that jellies can be quite sweet, quite cloying, whereas the flavours here are so sharp, they kind of really dance on your tongue. Oh, fresh citrus, it's amazing. Now's the time for the gelatin. I find these leaves of gelatin are so much easier to use than the powder. All I'm going to do is just put them in this cold water and leave them to soak, and it'll only take about a minute, and they kind of go spongy. And that's absolutely perfect, because once they've gone spongy, I'm going to dissolve them into a sugar syrup. My sugar syrup is just equal quantities of caster sugar. I've used an unrefined one, which has a better flavour, and water. So equal quantities of sugar and water. And to that, I'm going to add my spongy gelatin. So now my gelatin's been soaking for about a minute. I'm going to just pop it into my hot sugar syrup, and it's just going to dissolve as I stir it in. Add the syrup to your fruit juice, pour it into glasses and leave it in the fridge to set. And now for the next layer. Now, if I was in Mexico, I'd be using hibiscus flowers, which are everywhere. But because I'm not, I've got this really great cheat. First of all, black currant cordial, a couple of tablespoons. In that goes. And cranberry juice. I've got 300 mils here. And the flavour of this is so like hibiscus. And the contrast of the hibiscus with the passion fruit is wonderful. So to that, I'm going to add the juice of a lime. And the lime juice really sharpens up all the flavours and is a lovely contrast to the sweetness of the blackcurrant. I'm going to add my gelatin back to my sugar syrup. Once the mixture has cooled, add it onto the first layer of jelly and leave it in the fridge to set. And here they are. Now, you could leave them like that because they do look gorgeous, but I love a bit of clotted cream on top. Oh, look at that. Yummy. And I've got some squished up raspberries here, a bit of lime zest, and a little bit of extra passion fruit. And look at those colours, and the taste will please anyone. 
Mm. Fresh and zesty and definitely wobbly.